Hello, in this one, a Phantom Necro Soul Snatch DPS build. Um, immediately starting with a DPS check. So my damage numbers would be clear from the start. So you could see if it's better or worse than what you are managing to do. And I can tell you that right now, I've seen some Phantom Necros doing a little bit more than what I can do. I basically flatten out at 2.2k in a 2 minute fight or so. My burst is kinda nice, but after that it goes down pretty quick. So if you know what problems or what kind of mistakes I'm doing, let me know. I'm gonna fix those and I'm gonna fix the video also. I'm not using any consumables and my inscribed stone timer is really bad one, but I only wanted to show the base default DPS that you can do on this build with what I'm gonna show you. Main attribute is combo, as we want to hit that 50% um, combo percentage for our core passives. Omni cooldown is equal in importance in here, but I, I would say that uh, Omni is easier to use than cooldown. So Omni and then cooldown. For the items themselves, the only thing I can talk about is basically the special aptitudes, and on those, I'm kind of looking for Shadow Blade because every single Shadow Blade on your special aptitude increases your damage by up to 50. Up to 50 DPS, sometimes even up to 100, depending how much you're gonna crit with those. But Shadow Blade is not a, not a bad one. Of course, don't like remove something like like I have on my Leather Gunflats, Bone Spirit damage and triggering Echo of Destiny increases the next Bone Spirit damage. This is quite a bit of damage too. So most of those special attitudes it is actually not bad. The only thing that doesn't work on this build is Tangled Soul, as uh, Tangled Soul is uh, a different type of build. Talents look like this. So I'm gonna talk about some of my choices, so it would make more sense. So first one, Soul Reap. So you just want to weave in one Soul Arrow after you cast your Shadow Blade, that's not hard. Strong Soul requires to keep your Spectral active all of the time before you cast Soul Trap, and it's quite a bit of damage. Thumb Final is basically a proc on your soul energy to give one soul energy, which is a big deal. Soul Pact is just uptime on your Spectral, which you're gonna do it by default. Soul Trap Plus is just reduce your channel time on Soul Trap, which is a big deal. Bone Tampa increases your Bone Spirit damage and Spectral attack by 21%, which is a big deal as we keep Spectral all the time. Soul Burst Plus is just extra duration on your Soul Burst, however the Soul Reaper changes the way our rotation works. And if you have extra Shadow Blade damage on the special aptitudes on your items, it adds quite a bit of DPS. Umbra Flood is kinda hard to do, but when you get a trap of it, and you wait for your cooldowns a little bit, it adds quite a bit of damage. Core passives. So the first one is Mesmerize. It says that each combo landed by Soul Arrow has a 50% chance to grant Soul Arrow Plus. And that Soul Arrow Plus has a passive that stacks with our combo. That when casting that Soul Arrow Plus, there is a chance to increase our soul energy by 1. And at 50%, that chance becomes 100%. So we are always looking for that 50% combo. Second one is Shape Power. So Omni increases our soul trap damage. And on the passive part, whenever we cast our Soul Trap, for the next 3 casts, we have a damage increase depending on our Omni Breakpoint. Third one is a little bit more difficult. Basically, it says that we want to have our Soul Trap on cooldown before we cast Shadow Blade, because Shadow Blade has a chance to reset our Soul Trap. The passive part is more interesting one. If we have a cooldown breakpoint, let's say 10%, we get one extra attack on our Spectral after we cast a Shadow Blade. This one I can't say for sure, but I think this thing is dynamic. Basically, if you have your Spectral active and you cast your Shadow Blade, it's still gonna do that extra attack. It's not gonna be like you need to time your Spectral after you cast your Shadow Blade. But this is just a guess. But I see some other mechanics that works in the way I explained the first one. and. Basically, that it, it is dynamic. I was testing my inscribed stone for quite a bit today, but I still can't manage to increase my DPS. I tried two approaches basically. I tried the recommended build, and I tried building it myself by just focusing on, on the big nodes. 
but the DPS was very close to the same. So what I'm using right now is a recommended build, and I want to explain how it works basically. So recommended build, first of all, opens up your emblem slots, and then opens up your core passives. From from my testing, like the last core passive and the second one, they don't do too much for you, but for some reason, it still feels better to play like this. So after I opened up my core passives and my emblem, emblem slots, I started to go for my specialization attributes. And at the same time, I started to look for the emblems that actually gives additional multiply on those. As you can see, by default, it gives 105, but because of the 50%, I get 53 extra. And that 53 extra adds quite a bit on, on the overall combo that I get from my inscript stone. For the emblems themselves, I'm using auto control, burst, sprawl, and strife. I would say these four are the main ones that you can use. As we are not a full DPS class, we don't have some of the big emblems that DPSs can use. But I think this is the best one. And for the last one, I'm using high energy potion, but you can basically use any. The one that you find with the better additional effects, I would say that's gonna be the best. So yeah, basically what I'm doing right now, I'm just leveling up my new emblems every single time and I'm just trying to get the correct additional additional effects. And the correct ones is basically that increases the surrounding attributes by 50%. But this is what I'm using right now. I max out my specialization attributes. Right now I'm gonna look to max out my omnis, my cooldowns, and so on, so on, so on. Intelligence, stamina, and resonance, focus, I'm gonna leave for the rest. I don't know if this is the correct uh, approach, but this one was the, the most consistent damage I could have. Spectrum energy, in our case is soul energy, and we generate that by casting our soul trap and casting soul arrows, but the soul energy from the soul arrows only comes from the core passive, basically. Inscript stone energy, we generate that by casting our bone spirits and spectrals, which we do all the time. And the inscript stone state itself increases the soul energy generation from our soul arrows, and in and it increases it quite a bit. However, enhancing spectral is not a big part of the damage. It only does like like thirty percent more maybe on the on the spectral, which is not a big deal. However, you don't need to cast your spectral whenever you press your stone stone state, because if you have your spectral already it's still gonna be enhanced. It's like dynamic thing. Before going into the rotation, I want to talk about a few things. So first of all, you want to keep your soul trap on cooldown and you want to have your spectral active all of the time. Another thing is you don't want to go less than two soul energies because if you have exactly two soul energies, you can, you can press your soul trap. And with that, you're gonna be able to spawn your spectral and that's gonna increase your uptime on the spectral too. Another thing is whenever you don't have anything to press just use soul arrows and you can use your soul arrows in between your rotations as it can increase your soul energy and at the same time you're gonna be able to do more bone spirits and that's gonna be more damage. So the opener looks like this. Two soul traps into Bone Spirit, if Soul Elegy procs, you use Soul Elegy, then Shadow Blade, Soul Burst, and then all the Soul Arrows into the target. You can weave in one Bone Spirit, then Soul Arrows, Soul Arrows, then Soul Trap, Soul Elegy proc, use that, always use Soul Elegy on the procs. And after that, as I said, just keep your Soul Energy is more than two, and you're gonna be good. Shadow Blade on cooldown, and you just keep pumping. This is basically the wall rotation. Just remember to keep your spectral active. Soul arrows in between so when you don't have anything to press. And this is basically the simplest I can explain it. There is nothing much you can do. With more combo, you're gonna be able to generate more soul energies. That means you can cast more of the bone spirits, which is a big portion of your damage. Soul energy procs are really nice sometimes. You can get so much more damage out of it but sometimes it's absolutely dry. 
Just remember, before using Soul Burst, you want to have 5 Soul Energies to get those 5 Soul Arrow Plus. Those orbs basically are Soul Arrow Plus. On the Inscript Stone, the best moment I, I find to use it is when I have really low Soul Energy. And when I press that, my Soul Energy generation from Soul Arrows is insane. Remember that? The damage part of the Enhancing Spectral is really low. It doesn't add too much damage. But yeah, that's how it looks like. I hope this video helped you increase your DPS. Or maybe it's gonna help increase my DPS. We're gonna see. But GG's, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.